start with the worst side. Phyllis knows about us. Now, you said that before. How could she know? She has this thing in her head. Oh, you mean like a plate? Plate? My uncle has one of those. He was wounded in the war, and so they put this steel plate in his head, and now he says he can always tell when it's going to rain. <laughs> I'm in a lot of trouble. Why? I find everything you say absolutely fascinating. Oh, <laughs> tell me about your wife's steel plate. No, it's not a plate. It's more like a bell. I could be a million miles away, and if I even look at another girl, she knows it. Last night at 122, I just know she sat bolt upright in bed with her head going ding, 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 ding. <laughs> How did you know it was 122? My watch said 447. <laughs> okay, now tell me the good story about her. Well, she helped me believe in myself. I know it may be hard for you to imagine, but I used to be very insecure. Well, how did she do that? Help you believe in yourself? She married me. Oh, well that was very nice of her. I mean, bolstering you up and all. <laughs> okay, your turn. Tell me the worst story first. Okay. It's hard. To pick one? No, to, to think of one. Harry's the salt of the earth, everybody says so. Look, you owe me at least one rotten story. Oh, okay. Well, this is not really rotten, but it was on our fourth anniversary. We were having kind of a rough time. I was pregnant and we'd gotten in over our heads financially, but we decided to have some people over to help celebrate. Now, Harry's not much of a drinker, but he did have three beers that night. It was after the Gillette fights and I overheard him talking to some of the guys. And he said that his time in the army were some of the best years of his life. A lot of guys feel that way about the service. Harry was in the army for four years. Three of those years he spent in a Japanese prison camp. And he said this on our anniversary. Oh, I know he didn't mean to hurt me. Harry would never hurt anybody, but well, it hurt, you know? Oh, promise me you won't ever tell anybody I told you that. I wouldn't tell anybody. Because I've never told anyone that before. Okay. Now you want to hear the story about the good side of him? Not really. Oh, you have to. I don't want you to get the wrong impression of him. Okay, you insist. Well, Harry's this real big, heavy-set sort of guy. I wish you hadn't told me that. Oh, no, no, he's gentle as a puppy. Anyways, he's always trying to think of different things to do with each of the kids, you know? And he was having trouble trying to come up with something special to do with Tony, our four-year-old. Then he gets this idea to take them out to fly a kite. So, one Saturday, last winter, they go out. But there's no wind, and they're having trouble getting the kite to take off. Well, Tony, after a while, he's getting pretty bored, you know. He's only four years old. He asks if he can go sit in the car, and here he said, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> About an hour later, I come by on my way home to from the laundromat, and I see Tony sound asleep in the car, and Harry, all alone in the park, all by himself, all red in the face and pounding up and down and dragging this huge guy along behind him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, well, it, it really got to me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Helen has some wonderful qualities, too. <laughs> Who's Helen? My wife. You said her name was Phyllis. I lied. Phyllis, Helen, what's the difference? I'm married. I'm sorry, I just didn't want to leave any clues. I thought you might try to look me up or something. Is your name really George? My name? Do you think I'd lie about my own name? Yes. That'd be crazy. You're crazy. It's funny, isn't it? Here we are, in a hotel room, gazing into each other's eyes. And we're married with six kids between us. Oh, you got pictures? What? Pictures of your kids! Well, sure, but I don't think this oh, is the time. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> I keep mine in a special.